let's take a look at 1700 to 1800. Now, as we recall, on or around November the 11th, 1620, our folks arrived on the shores and it had been a 66 day travel across the ocean. Now, personally, I could use a 66 day cruise, but I don't believe they came in on a Disney liner. I think they came in on a very difficult boating situation. Now, where are we by 1700? That's 80 years later. You know I love a timeline, so we're going to go through this and see what kind of interests you as we look around and see what happened in these hundred years. Y'all, when you're taking English courses at the university level, I've always thought it was a good idea to start with one of these timelines when I take a period of literature, and it helps me to see what was going on in the world at the time. So let's zoom over here and see what happened just 80 years after our folks arrived in America. That's right, we're going to have a war. My goodness, you all, they just got to town. And we're already going to have a war, and that war is going to last 12 years. Are you serious? Anyway, that's kind of interesting. This Queen Anne's War situation is sort of interesting, if that's kind of your your thing. Let's look at it just real fast. Well, here's a little bit about Queen Anne's War. and Well, here we are. Who won the Queen Anne's War? The British won the war. Okay. My goodness. That is a long time to be at war over this is my land and you can't stay here. My goodness. Oh. Well, there she is. I like her hair ornaments. Anyway, let's move on. Wouldn't it be funny if we had something on the timeline that said, and then they all decided to get along and hold hands and sit by the campfire and sing songs together. No, no, they're just going to keep on fighting. My goodness. And as we've seen throughout, here's this Cotton Mather again. I mean, They've built up a pretty good population here, and I'm hearing so much from Cotton Mather all the time. My goodness, doesn't anybody else have something to say? Well, I don't know, but he kind of interests me, and if he interests you, take a little closer look. And we have folks fighting about this and that. Population has moved up to 474,000, so somebody's doing something, so that's good. But... Here comes the smallpox epidemic. You all, my goodness. I wonder, I might be interested in that just a little bit. And then Benjamin Franklin. What a big name in our history is Benjamin Franklin. If you're interested in him, you might want to take a little bit closer look. He was a quite a little person and had lots and lots to say. So I think that's kind of interesting if that if that strikes your fancy. Um, let's see. Well, at last, 1738, a new preacher comes to town. George Whitefield arrives in Savannah. Have you all ever been to Savannah? I love Savannah. I think it's one of the prettiest towns, and it's just mystical out there in the countryside. Anyway, he comes to Savannah, and he's got a whole new set of sermons telling folks what they need to do. Meanwhile, people are at war, but we have preachers telling people what to do. I find that interesting. Do you at all? Well, if you do, carry on with that and look into it. Now, here's something that I find kind of interesting. Maybe you don't, but I do. And that is in the middle of all this. War, preachers telling people how to be. Folks must be scared about keeping their homes safe. Everybody's attacking people, and it's just unrest everywhere and still in 1749 the first american acting company establishes in philadelphia and it's opened with thomas Keene and richard the third that is so interesting to me there will be dramatists there will be theater all right let's move on now over here on the right of this timeline is the literature and there are some interesting things that were written at that time and 
You might want to see if any of those look interesting. Let's move on to 1750 to 1800. Okay, here we go. And let's slide over here and see what in the world was going on. Okay, 1754, the colonies adopt Benjamin Franklin's plan of the Union. So things are beginning to get organized, aren't they? French troops are defeated. Here's something I've always thought was interesting. Daniel Boone. There used to be a TV show called Daniel Boone. But I mean, when you think that Daniel Boone is going to just explore Nobody has any idea what's going on or where they're going. I mean, they've done some some scouting and some things like that, but Daniel Boone travels to the Kentucky Territory through the Cumberland Gap. I was there two years ago, and that Cumberland Gap is so interesting. It's where all these states meet. It's just beautiful. Anyway, if you're interested in Daniel Boone, you might want to take a look at that. And then, of course, for California folks, uh, Junipero Serra, Founds the mission at San Diego, and that's a very interesting set of historical facts and documents that go along with that. So if that's interesting to you, look into that. And of course, here we go. 1770, March the 5th, the Boston Massacre. My gosh. So if you're interested in that, you might want to dig a little bit deeper on that. I just can't get over it sometimes. I would think that I would get here and I'd go, oh my gosh, look how pretty this place is. Look how gorgeous the mountains are. I'm going to go climb a mountain. Instead, we're going to have a war. All right, so all colonies except Georgia send representatives to the first Continental Congress. I have seen those documents and it is awesome. And I think that studying this, these important uh, documents that allowed America to be independent. I don't think, I, I just can't beat it. It's an incredible period of time and you can see what the, what the cost was to people. You're going to pay a price for these opinions and ideas that you have and yet they stood firm and they created this and I think it's beautiful so if it's interesting to you look into that I find it to be incredible so 1776 that's when it all happens and um, now we have San Juan Capistrano Sa Sarah's little uh, determination is now moving through California 1789, George Washington is elected president. Do you all know anything about George Washington? Quite a character. If you're kind of interested in that, I highly recommend learning and digging in a little bit uh, closer view of our George Washington, the first president of the United States. Very, very interesting. Now, then we look at this and we go, cotton mill, who cares? Well, I'll tell you what. If it hadn't been for the cotton mill, I don't know what in the world we'd done because there needed to be industry. There needed to be something that we could create as a bargaining chip, as something to sell. And so that's very interesting. If that kind of thing interests you, uh, again, you're arriving with nothing. Maybe some technology. Maybe some people had a thing or two, you know, but this is a big event and you think, oh, well, is it? Well, it is. So find out why if that interests you. And of course, enough time hasn't passed while we're at war. So we're going to start the Whiskey Rebellion in Western Pennsylvania, which was where farmers were opposed to the collection of tax, tax on their liquor and their little stills. And that's kind of interesting. And we're going to conclude 1794 to 1800 with Jay's Treaty provides for withdrawal of British forces from the Northwest Tor Territory. In June of 1796, Tennessee is admitted to the Union as a slave-holding state. That just breaks my heart. That's going to break my heart as long as I live on this planet. George Washington's farewell address 
is quite an interesting document. And if that interests you, I'd like for you to take time to go and look at that. Uh, and then he died in 1799. And off we're going. The United States is united. So let's look at the literature overview for this particular timeline. Oh, surprise, surprise, Benjamin Franklin wrote something. And um, we move on, and we've got Ezra Stiles, A Discourse on the Christian Union, The Sugar Cane, A Poem in Three Books. That might be interesting to know more about. William Bartram Travels in Florida with his father. Samson Ockham is kind of an interesting person, another preacher, but he was a Native American. And that he got some notoriety, I think, is kind of interesting. Now, I know what you've been thinking throughout this hundred years, and that is, did women have anything to say at all? Well, yes, this little gal, quite a little whippersnapper, had some things to say. I like her. I like that little look in her eyes. I think she's a little spitfire. So if you're interested, maybe you want to look at what she had to say. And, of course, trying to calm things down, Thomas Paine wrote Common Sense. Now, if you are interested in any of these things, which you're going to need to find something in this hundred years that you're interested in, and when you do find something that you're interested in looking into a little bit more, you're going to go to EasyBib, you're going to open a, create a new project, and you are going to study three articles on the events of during this 100-year timeline that interest you, and you're going to read those articles, and then you're going to write the short two paragraphs. First paragraph, what did you read about, and what did you learn? Second paragraph, how do you feel about what you learned? And that's going to be that for this particular overview of 1700 to 1800. My goodness! Anyway, have a wonderful time, and I will look forward to hearing what you were interested in. That concludes this tutorial.